Uh, what made on ourselves, Handel? I thought you might like to. I'm going to do scripture in English. Do what flight teach in English. But I can understand. So hope we we can all take something home from this. But what you me have to do is what I I we are going down. But I want to keep it to what share. And and that is why I'm interested. I see more what God I'm dead and I'm in drum. Fern lays we do what God have we we sign that what God and Joseph. Sie in Traum deut. Wenn ich sage, Mary nicht wohl ohne ihn versiegt, because und ich weiß nicht, was du, was du wirst. Und ich will auch nicht. Und der Engel, der kam im Traum, und der sagte, ich soll sich nicht mehr ohne ihn. Weil es dort, was du, was du wir in Ar, dort wir von den Heiligen jetzt. Und, und das ist interessant, so, Vielleicht glaube ich, dass wir diese Tage die Sinn und Gott mal träumen, dass Gott in den Traum reden wird. Weil, ich habe den letzten Weg, ja, ich hatte einen Traum, ich wusste, dass es von Gott war. Und wir sind total anders. Ich sehe, dass wir ein bisschen interessant sind. Wir reden noch mal von Kinder, die ich einen Schlaf habe. Ich weiß nicht, ob die Kinder dort noch mal haben. Aber ich und Sarah hatten einen Schlaf. And I'm going to tell you why, because Sunday evening our heater went out on our house last Sunday. And I said, well, you know what? We have the office. We are doing heater bed. We warned us about no man, we're going to have that sleepover. That first night, it's the dream that I had, it was awesome. I don't know if you God we street what peace us. And now I had that and I want to share that a little bit. It's like God voiced me. All, I felt like all four corners of the world. But it was different than what we're used to. It was quiet and it was peaceful. It wasn't all that we see in the world. It was something just totally different. I said, you know, when I woke up, it's like, I don't think this was the world. I think it was heaven. There was a lot of people. But it was as quiet and peaceful as you could ever have it. And I told Sarah about it. And to me, it's like it was so real. You know, in that peace we have this morning that we can celebrate when Christ was born. I think, and you know what it says that he was born for the world. To be saved. What includes each and every person in this world. He wasn't just born to be a little baby. That we could see him or hold him like the shepherds did. But he was, he was our savior. He was to grow up and to die for our sins. And then he went back to the father and he's still there. Praying for us daily. He wants us all to be with him. And I'm going to say it again. You know Jesus built the bridge. That was torn down by Satan. Jesus rebuilt it. And we can all come to the Father. It's our, our own choice. You know and why I say it's so peaceful? Because Jesus doesn't force his way into our heart. But we have heard often he knocks on our door. He wants to come in. He wants to have a life with us so we can feel what life is supposed to be all about. You know, this life here in this world, in our flesh, it should still be good and peaceful. To me, it just, I just felt like I, w I was going to share this because that was a dream like I don't think that a dream that I have had. And I have had more. I have shared more dreams. When you pray, I know right in the beginning when I was in ministry, it's a lot of times I struggled. I, it took me a whole week to prepare a message. And uh, as I would pray day after day, then all of a sudden there was a dream and I knew, I knew what that, that dream was all about. If we have a, a life with God, God will show us. Maybe in our dreams, maybe when we're awake, but he will show us. 
He will lead and he will guide. I know, I know it is God. And you know, he gave us his son. And I want to start off with a couple of verses here, and then we're going to go into prayer first. I'm going to start off with Galatians 1, from 3 through 5. It says, Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I love the way Paul puts it here. It is our Lord and Jesus Christ. It's, we can all say that. We can have him as for our own. It's personal. It says, who gave himself. They didn't take him. He gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God. And our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. A verse that came to mind, kind of to start this off, we find in Isaiah. Isaiah is beautiful. I love to read it because it's like God is speaking to us directly. You know, in Isaiah, when he wrote this, did he believe that? How else would he have put it on paper? And it's just like as God is speaking to us. And I know that's how he was speaking to Isaiah. That's how he could, he could bring this out. We heard just a couple of Sundays ago, or was it last Sunday? I don't know, when Pancho was doing the opening, he kind of shared a little bit. Kind of went back and forth from the old New Testament, how it was so the same. But I want to read Isaiah 9 and verse 6 this morning. And you know, this is what Isaiah is, is, is writing long, long before Christ was born. But listen to it. It says, For to for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Now listen to the words. Wonderful is the first word. I don't know if you have ever, ever thought about what the word means, wonderful. It's something beyond that we can imagine. Counselor. Why is he called a counselor? How often do we come to Christ? We hurt or we are thankful and Jesus is there to counsel us. He will never fail us. He does it today as Isaiah writes it. It says, and the, and the next word is the mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It's powerful. Before I want to start, before I go into the Christmas story, I want to go a little bit. I didn't know for sure, am I going to go into Matthew today or Luke? Well, I have a little bit of Luke before I'm going to go into Matthew. And I went kind of back and forth. And I want to share just a little bit what Zechariah had to share about his son, John, when he was born. And to me, it's wonderful. When we look into Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 63 and through 80, just to read and talk about it just a little bit. To me, it was awesome when, when this was all done. You know, Zechariah, for nine months, we know that he didn't speak. He couldn't speak because he didn't believe when the angel told him that they would have a son. So for that, he couldn't speak. But the very first thing is when they, when they talk about the name. And I think, right? The dad hides so 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 But this was, this was different. Because God hoped to Zechariah, his name shall be John. So I couldn't go here. So the mom said they didn't see no Miss John, and they can't believe it. The Zionists like no. So they free on Zechariah. Noon sign. What is his name? And I thought that's in the two from Shrift and up John. And you know, in the moment he does that, then the mule was open and couldn't tell. Just imagine nine months. 
And we need to realize who he was, and he couldn't speak for nine months. It had to have been so hard. I cannot even imagine when I would and trouble them. And I would say a sign language statement later, and for people to understand us. But I want to read these verses from 63. It says, And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. They wondered, like, why would he call him John? It's like, and it says here, and his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. First thing that he could say is, he just praised God. It says, and fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were, were noised abroad throughout the hills of the country of Judea. So that word is a gone so long to foretell what he is worried about. This Johannes, and where be this Johannes? The Bible in Vietnam says, who was he? It says, and all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts. And went to their hearts when they heard that. Saying, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And it says, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. But then you go on to the, there it says his people, we know they were the Israelites. But then you go and then you read more, it says, but he was born. And he died for the world. So it's not just Israel. It was first to Israel, but it, then it was to each and every one. You know, all the people that are still not born, and we know there, there's, I don't know how many people that, that babies that are born each and every day. God's son died for them as well as he did for us, or for them people that he is speaking of. Said, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people, and had raised up an horn of salvation for us and the house of his servant David. And he spake by them by the mouth of the holy prophets, which had been since the world began. When you look in Jeremiah, it's written exactly in, in Daniel. It, it, it writes about it. It's, it's talking about it. And then it says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the, mer the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. And when you go to Abraham, then it speaks of long ago from the time. You know, and then, and then you want to look at the time. And when you study that a little bit, to me it's so interesting. And then I went back to Abraham. And then, it, and then it gives you time. And it's, I kind of want to have questions for you today. You don't have to answer. How old was Abraham when he left his family and he went to his total strange land? To me, it's like I don't memorize those things until I, till I read them again. I don't know. Does anyone, anybody know? I know because I read it. He was 75 years old when he left his family. And you know he was about right at 100 years old when Isaac was born. The promise that all this had to come through because that Jesus would be born. But how many years from Abraham's, the promise that God gave Abraham, how many generations did it take to Jesus Christ? Three times 14, which equals 42 generations later, there was Christ was born. And it says an average about 40 years per generation. So it was close to 1,700 years 
when the promise was made to Abraham until Christ was born. Now when we look back at, at when Christ was born, it's better than 2,000 years ago. So that's approximately 4,000 years since the promise. And you know why this is written? And I think the time is important when we read that. That we just know what, the, what was prophesied. The time and our fellow and not what all of us And you know what on? Because we are supposed to believe that all the promises that have been made, it will happen. God did his part. And you know, one of these days, Christ will come for each and every one of us. <coughs> and to me, it's like we should be looking forward to this. It's when you, when you look look back in time, they totally believed that Jesus would be born. Some believed even, his disciples believed that he would come back while they still were living on this earth. Because the way what Jesus spoke, he didn't say the time when he would come back. But he just said soon. And for God it is soon. For us, it's a long time. But then we look at this where he saved us from, from eternal damnation. That's not, 4,000 4, years is nothing compared to eternity. So we can just look back in the promise that God made to us. It's how beautiful it was. And this John was born just to get the people ready for Jesus Christ. Verse 72, it says, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which, which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet on the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord and prepare his ways. That's why John was born. That's the reason. It says to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God whereby the day spring from on high had visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And it says, and the child grew And he became stronger in spirit and was in the deserts until the day of the showing unto Israel. And how old was he when he came out of the desert when he started preaching? We know he was close to 30 years old. You know, after he was born, his parents were old. I don't know how long they lived. But to me often was the question, where did he grow up? How did he grow up? Well, that tells us here. When he was ready and he was in the desert, we know what he ate, we know what he was wearing for clothes. So we know that God prepared him in the desert just so he would come and preach to the people that Jesus was coming and that Jesus was already there. For me, this Johannes half Neziah Grote Wicht, oh, because I came. Der Mensch hat drei Märchen in Serie und dort kippt man, Jesus kämpft. Ich sehe, ob eine Stelle so gut, kippt man, Jesus erst all mank uns. Aber viele Dinge, die ich nicht ganz verstehen kann, da man einmal sagt, was ist das, dass ich kann am, aber ich kann am nicht. Wenn ich in Präsen erst, und wo wir in Präsen erst, hat der Menschen der Wort verteilt. 
Wenn ein Mensch in Sinnen geht, hat er vielleicht so gewonnen, dass er kann nicht ist. Er wird den gut sein, die das auch Du gehst, was du das als je in Gott. Und das kostet ihm sein Leben. Aber wenn du mich in Prison wirst, dann schickt er ein paar von seinen Jägern. Nur Jesus. Und das ist so interessant, wo Jesus an beantworten wird. Das soll Jesus freuen. Was du da ist, nur das, was wir lernen, aber das soll wir noch länger lernen. Und was wird Jesus seine Antwort? Er sagt, gut sagt der Johannes, das ist wir. Der Lohme kann gehen, der Blinge kann sein, der Dove der kann hier, der Dode stehen ab. Was sagt er? Er sagt, er hat sie mal so eine Sorge. You know what? Und dann starft er. At age, just 30 plus. Because his work was done here. Some people have a young life, some people live an old life. We don't know how long we're going to live. I just know that God has given me plenty of years so I could glorify Him and get to know Him. To me, this was just beautiful to share what, what have that you doing? What have this God for us you doing? Now, when we look at the, the story where, where Christ was born, and we will go back there to Matthew and, uh, and Luke. You know, Luke was one that wasn't a disciple to Christ. I think we all know that. But I think so Luke on found that, I don't know if you've ever been on to your list, and I think we have all that. That's that he has to say, I know you're saying, I have to abschrieben that, that he has to they were the selbst gewasse and met Jesus top. They have he gefragt what they do with him. In viele mold fragt wie vielleicht warum that Matthew and Luke, John, warum don't they are Mark, warum don't they are unterschiedlich? Well, they don't all are and was it von dort schrieben. Noch mal bloß und was it what they von Jesus gesehen haben. But there's viel mehr tot dort zu guck, dort zu guck nicht, dass they alles wurden ever reinschrieben. But if I go to the lesen and the fire gospels, then I can't understand it. It's like they say, you all have the top of us, why do they tell so many things? Well, they want more from that to tell them what they from Jesus had, and that's why they want to tell them that we want to be different. In Matthew, we want to read from verses 18 and through 25. And I said that I have a part of the bulletin, especially, and I want to say thank you. It's a clear postcard that I told what we in Isaiah fungen. And we will read it here again, Matthew 1, 18 through 25. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. It says, When? As his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Or we could say Holy Spirit. It says then Joseph, her husband, that's ein Shemuel Freovians, and I don't know, I could use all of Freon. Was Joseph the husband to her already? Or were they engaged? Uh, you know, I glad we can't feed the Nanking because Marriages were totally arranged them days. I claimed all white viola. When we look back, they were arranged between the parents. But I guess we could call that as, as they were engaged. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. See, here we see again. But while he, he thought on, the, on these things. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And he did it more often. I think two or three times we find out that an angel appeared to Joseph. I know when the child was in danger, when he was about two years old, it was also in a dream that God would come to him and say that you need to leave this country. 
And you know, he didn't wait till morning. In the middle of the night, him and Mary, they would get themselves ready with this, with this baby, and they left in the middle of the night. You know, they didn't have a car. They didn't have a bus. They had their donkey, and they went like that. And they went from one country to another just so God's will could be done. So hier doch Joseph und er verloren, aber er will nicht, er nicht mehr einen Schlag feiern in Public. Er kann nicht sein, dass er nicht gewiss wird, wie er nicht gewiss wird, wie er weiß, dass er, dass er pregnant wird. Und er weiß, dass er nicht ein frommer Mann wird, weil er wieder noch nicht aufgekommen ist. Aber der Engel, der kam im Traum, der das Wort sehen wird. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, it says, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he always remembered. They never hesitated. It's like, what is his name going to be? So we can, we, can, we can say that he just totally, he was uh, obeying God totally. For, for he shall save his people from their sins. It says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So how long has that been since God has been with us? So that always proves that Jesus, the Son, is also the Almighty God. You know, sometimes it doesn't make sense to us when we say it's three people, but there's just one God. But then when we look at it like this, then it does make sense. Now listen to it. It says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's only one God, but it is three people in one. It says, then Joseph being raised from Sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. It says, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This Jesus Christus, have you knew all of you or have you didn't you celebrate it? Depends how old we are, right? I don't know if any one of us, if we could tell, how young were we when we first knew of Jesus Christ? And then the next question would be, how old were we when we knew this Jesus Christ? How old were we when we accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior? For us it's wichtig, because that's why He was born. That's why he was given to us. It says he was given to us, to the world. That we can have everlasting life. You know, we have heard it often that we are supposed to accept this. We have been encouraged to accept this Christ. And when I say personal Lord and Savior, it's just like when we have a friend, a personal friend. That we can share everything that is on our heart. It's this Jesus Christ that's there. You know, when we share with Him, we know that is confidential, that is between us. So, whatever is on our heart, we can share with Christ. It's not just a book. Christ needs to become life to us. He was crucified and he died and God woke him up. 
We know the story when they were looking for him in the tomb. He wasn't there. And I like the way it's written. Mary, that, you know, they had all the evil spirits within when, when Christ cleaned them out. She was there probably one of the first by the tomb. And she was just wondering, like, what have they done to my Lord? And she figures that Jesus is the gardener. She's asking him, what have you done with him? And what does Jesus say? The way I see it is Jesus is standing behind Mary. And all Jesus is saying, Mary. And she turns around. When, he, when she hears that voice, she knows it's him. Have you heard from we were in a new church and when we were in a new with God living out this life we will have a whole new body Did you, do you know or do you believe that Christ had a new body you know why I know he did because his disciples did not know him two of them walked with him they didn't know him until he showed him the, the nail prints in his hands. You know, and I especially love that song. What does I see? The only scars in heaven will be the ones on Jesus Christ. You know what does it mean? It means for us, there be no faults in us. There be no guilty feelings it will just be beautiful the only thing in our mind is going to be just to glorify God the only thing I could hear a of harsh lesson in the What a kirchen bit you met I on died and you know me said interesting when you sometimes some fun day messages what I know that it's you almost use the whole Bible from the front to the back. Where's the first promise when sin came into the, to this world? Where's the first promise that God gave us that He would send us a Savior in the beginning? Genesis 3 and verse 15. We find it the very first time. But then in, uh, in Genesis 12, it's through Abraham. That's where it starts. I'm going to just read a couple of verses here. In, the, in uh, Genesis 12, starting verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So it's not just the Israelites. It's the whole world will be blessed through Abraham. The promise that God is making here to Abraham. Why was he Abraham there? Then later on he became Abraham. Does anyone even know why he was called Abraham? I believe the reason is because he was a father of many, many People. That's why he was Abraham. But just imagine, you know, the story of Abraham, we could go and it would be a, even a separate message, but I'm going to just, uh, just a little bit. They, they waited until they were so old when Isaac was born. And then there came a test. Then God says, I want you to make an offer of your son Isaac. 
Yeah. Was that also in a dream? Yes, it was. You know, in Abraham, early in the morning, got up, took Isaac, and he was going to do what God wanted him to do. I glaube, wenn man bloß fort wird, weil wir mal hören, dass die Hörsam sind, was a lot of the people wir to God, ist like, meine Frau ist fern, are we still that obedient to God? As Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all them. Von der, mit was ich schlüten will, fing wir in Matthew 11. Und you know, mir ist das interessant, was Jesus hier sieht. Er sagte nicht bloß zu seinen Jüngern, er sagte zu uns. In Matthew 11, 28 und 30, wir gehen und lesen. Und just memorize these verses. Even if we don't memorize anything else from this message today, just remember what Jesus is telling us here. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He says, Come on to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's no question about it that maybe he will do it. You know when we struggle? As from a child, I remember when I was young, I had struggles. I had big, big struggles in life. You still hear today, young people have so many struggles, and I believe these days they have more struggles than what we had growing up. Because there's more to offer that the world offers and that brings trouble into, into a young person's life. But this is what he is telling us. Come unto me, all ye, that labor and are heavy laden. But ye schwor my thing of the Lord says, I could pray to know me. And I will give you rest. He's, he's making that promise and he does that. Believe me. I think all of us have experienced that. When we face something very, very hard, we bring it to God. We get rest. Meaning, he takes it away from our heart and we can live peacefully again. Verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. That's what Jesus is saying. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, Jesus said, when ye bloß me born and halten, you in tech is a well tech to learn about it. All I show it will be good. You will be okay. Does it mean that it always will be easy? There's no such promise in the Bible. But there is a promise if you bring it to Christ that he will help us. Through every situation, everything that we will, that we fear, we can bring it to Him. That always brings me to that one song. And in the red book, it's number 353. I know we often sing it here in church, but we have had that group singing here, I think, every time we have heard it, yeah. And it's, I think, one of the most beautiful songs that just tells us to bring everything to Jesus. You know, now I ask myself, if we would just only do that, we wouldn't have that many struggles in this world. We could have it so simple. Just bring it to God when we struggle. How many times do we do it? We may just wait until we, they say, we can't handle it. Bring it to Him before you hurt so much. I quite don't feel the parents that raised a family, they struggle. My aunt are that only kind, but you know what? We don't really have to. We bring the new Jesus and Jesus to help us to mount. And I quite assign teenagers, young ones, if you struggle, bring it to Christ. You know Christ. And if you don't know Christ, ask the parents, ask friends. That's not that we don't be there and suffer. And maybe. The Bible is teaching us this, everything to God in prayer. So what is not included in it? You know what, from when we get up in the morning until we go to sleep, everything there where we have a concern or being thankful, just bring it to God. 
wem kann wir, wem kann wir das sagen, wer haupt uns so viel, als Gott uns haupten hat. Von der habe ich ein Kind bitte näher gekriegt, was Gott für uns getan hat, meine Frau bloß erst. Haben wir das alle auch genommen für uns? We need to just remember, you know what, not just today is Christmas Day. Christmas Day should be a Christmas year. It should be a Christmas life. It's where Christ was born for us sinners so we can have freedom. Jesus said, when I can free me, I can say, I want to be free. What you want to mind? That's that peace that I was talking before. When you look into the world where you see all the people, they're all totally peaceful. Can you imagine in Ukraine and Russia if they would just be there? You know what our duty is for them? Pray for them. Have a closing prayer. Himmlischer Vorher, wir kommen vor den Helden an, ihr sagt, Herr Jesus, wir sind dir so dankbar, dass du dein Leben Herr Jesus, für uns, so dass wir leben können, dass wir eternal life können haben, mit dem Vorher und mit dir. Himmlischer Vorher, dass wir die Vorher nahen können, und Jesus, dass wir die können, als Bruder nahen. Wir sind so dankbar dafür. Wir weiten dort, wir sind dort nicht wert. Aber dort ist, wo die Genug entkommt hat. Wir sind so dankbar für die Genug. Herr Jesus, wir loben und wir preisen die. Wir leben die von ganzem Hort. Wir leben die mit der Leib, wo du uns erst mit dir leibt hast. Himmlische Vorder, wir leben auch einer den anderen hier. Dort wir machen einer den, für den anderen zu sein. Dort wir uns machen durchhalten, durch, durchhalten durch die Troubles, die wir in dieser Welt facen dann. Himmlische Vorder, wir weiten dort, du hast den Pott getan. Du bist geboren, du bist gestorben, du bist Tränen um Himmel gefahren. Himmlische Vorder, dort wie auch, du kannst ankommen. Wir wollen die loben und wir wollen die preisen dafür. In Jesus Christus, in nun, Baby, Dad. Amen.